Hi, this is another show of the Finance and Accounting Show. And today I have a great guest on that shows business owners how to generate referrals without asking. So you definitely want to stay tuned for Stacy because she has some great things and I'm really interested in hearing her story. So stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of the Finance and the Accounting Show. This is the place to go for small business owners. If you're looking for a great way to understand the finance and the accounting side of your business, you're in the right place. So stay tuned and enjoy the episode. As I said, I have another great guest. So let me bring her on and we'll just jump into the conversation. Welcome to the show, Stacey. Hey there. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. My pleasure. How are things going today? Things are going great and hot. <laughs> you know, before we, uh, we started recording, you and I were talking about that. And I'm just like, you know, for all those that are outside of the city of Charlotte, you know, this is one of those towns where, you know, we kind of get jealous of some other cities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, those that lack humidity. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I know, like, I, I was telling you, like, my wife and I, we took my parents to Hawaii and while we were there, we were just sitting out on the beach like, man, you can just sit out here all day with the breeze. And then when we got back here, it was just like, oh, yeah, we're home. <laughs> right. Welcome back to the, to the sauna. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Stacey, before we jump into your amazing business and how you're helping so many business owners generate referrals without even asking, you know, tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I wish that I could tell you that one day I just woke up and I was like, I'm going to teach people how to get referrals without asking. Like, I wish it was like this beautiful stroke of brilliance that just hit me. But actually, it was the school of hard knocks. I mean, that's truly where I learned the strategy that I teach today. And it it all started because I had a business. It was an HR consulting firm that failed after four years. It didn't quite make it to the five year mark. And when I finally, you know, like pick yourself up off the ground and you're like, oh, I failed. Like, I have a real true failure <laughs> with all of the, um, you know, emotional strain that is financial strain that comes with that, the psychological strain as well in terms of like your ego takes a massive bruising. You kind of pick yourself up and you're and you decide either to learn from it or not. And when I looked back on my business, I was like, you know, I helped some pretty big clients. Like it wasn't as if my business never had traction. I mean, like I had KPMG and BDO and Ally Bank and Coca-Cola co co uh, Consolidated Bottling is like, those are some of my bigger clients that I had the opportunity to work with. And I had some smaller ones too. And I was published in some really cool publications and interviewed on Bloomberg News. Like from the outside looking in, you would have thought my business was doing really well, but it had a huge secret. And the huge secret that it had was that I wasn't consistently filling up that pipeline, that prospecting Gosh. pipeline of new prospects, right? I mean, like we all know it, whether it's a funnel to you or it looks like a different shape, it's all the same things. People come in the top, they go through the buyer's journey and then they make a decision. Yes, no, or not now when it comes to working with you. And for me, it wasn't about get, like getting people out the bottom of the funnel. It was like, I didn't have anybody coming in <laughs> consistently. And I think small business owners and in particular solopreneurs like the me, myself and I club, I think in particular, when you're thinking about as business owners, you know, we put our head down and we do the work. And then we look up and we're like, oh snap, there is no more business. I have no more clients. And then we're back to hustling. And it's like riding this entrepreneurial roller coaster, but it's like the ride you never want to be on. It's not your favorite roller coaster. And it's normal your first or second year in business. But by your second or third year, you really should have strategies in place to have exited that roller coaster ride. You should have a way to understand how to build and fill the pipeline of potential new clients in your business so that when you have have capacity to take on new clients, you have them waiting, or you're consistently bringing in the number you need on a monthly budget, I mean, on a monthly basis to hit your budget or whatever it looks like for you, not feast or famine and having to go out and hustle every time it gets, you know, crazy slow. And I just didn't learn that with my first business. And so I had to go back to corporate America, which is, it's like the hardest thing to do <laughs> once you've had your own freedom to go back to corporate America. And then I started, I was like, I got to get out. 18 months later, I was like, exit strategy. What are you going to be? And I got certified as a productivity and business coach. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. And, you know, I had, I think I had the first couple of clients who were like, oh, I feel bad for Stacey. So like, <laughs> my hourly rate, like way back then was like $125 an hour. Like it was, it 
it was nothing, <laughs> but it was like, let's just try to see if we can make some money or whatever. And so I started building this business. And when I looked back on why the first one failed, what I realized is yes, filling the pipeline was my problem. But the other problem I had was, was where that business was coming from. Like the little business I did have, where was it coming from? It was all networking. Well, by the time I, that business failed and I had gone to corporate America and then I was back out on my own, you know, now I've got two kids and then eventually would add a third child. I can't spend every night networking. So I was like, well, where else should business be coming from? And then I was like, oh, referrals. I should be getting some of those. I looked back on my business, that first one, that HR consulting firm, not one referral, big wow. goose egg, not one <laughs> referral. And I was like, well, obviously I'm working too hard. So like everybody else, I went to the all knowing Google and I'm like, okay, Google, tell me how I get referrals. <laughs> and all the advice was everything I hated. It was like, ask for referrals, pay for referrals. And I was like, wow. no, or be really gimmicky and promotional and cheesy, like putting in your email signature. Oh, the best compliment you can give me is a referral. It's like, <laughs> no duh. Right? So like, for me, it was like all the tactics that were being taught and had been taught for decades. And I would say in some cases, like the asking advice for generations, it was like, hey, if you want them, this is how you get them. And I was like, but what about the rest of us who don't want them that way, but no, we deserve them. What do we do to go about getting them? And I'm a reverse engineer when, it, for the most part, I'm a reverse engineer when it comes to like figuring out what I'm going to do here. And so I was just started looking at why does something happen? And then like kind of reverse engineering what I was doing in my business, but it was really throwing spaghetti on the wall. It was like, let's see if this sticks. Let's see if this sticks. <laughs> and in my first year as a business coach, I received 112 referrals. I didn't ask for Wow. It. And then wow. that's continued over the hundred mark every year since, even as I've completely shifted away from productivity and business coaching and just teaching mm -hmm. my referrals without asking strategy, like everything dramatically changed for my business. And I took what I learned and then started teaching to my first clients. And now we are in 10 different countries all across the world in terms of helping business owners say, hey, listen, if you want referrals, but you don't want to ask, you don't want to pay and you don't want to be gimmicky or promotional, there is another option. Um, it takes work like any other option, but it fits most people's personalities because it's more authentic. Wow. I, I love it. I love it. I mean, there, there's so much value there that I, there's, a, there's several things that I want to go back to. I mean, yeah. I, I think the first one that you talked about with, you know, with really thinking about your business and, you know, like I said, you're going from feast to famine where, you know, you grind really, really hard to get those first clients. You got them. Now all of your focus is on serving them and there's nothing in the pipeline. Like, yes. you know, when you were kind of going through that roller coaster, were there, I guess, thinking back on it now, were there any signs that were telling you like, hey, you know what, I probably should be thinking about the pipeline. But, mm -hmm. you know, was there anything that stood out to you then that was a sign of that? So, you know, I actually think the first thing that I noticed was two years into the business when my big client, which is one of the accounting firms, was no longer a client. So like I started my business with a dream situation. I was working as a partner in a small company after having left corporate and I had a big client, it was one of the accounting firms and they were like, you're really good at this piece, you should start. And like the HR director just believed in me and she was like, you should really start your business, your own business and I will pay you to do this piece for us. And I was like, yeah, because I'm in a partnership with a married couple, which means I only get a third of everything, right? Not the two thirds <laughs> of everything. And so I was like, yeah. And so I started a business Business with a major client and had a contract with them for two years. So I was lulled into complacency on some level, even though I knew mm -hmm. sales and marketing and all those things were going to be important. And then when that contract was no more, it was like the hustle really began and the constant searching for the next client, the next deal. And what I remembered mostly was looking for ways to bring in business where I didn't have to do the hard stuff. Like I was never going to cold call. I was never going to cold email. So it was like, well, should I do direct mail or should I just try to get some, like some articles written about me and get some PR? Like I had a PR firm that I was paying at the time. And it was like, what can I do? So I don't have to spend every night networking and trying to bring in business. And there was a part of the hustle that I didn't do in the beginning that I think would have taught me what was going to work by the time I hit my third and fourth year, I just kind of got it to it a little bit too late. And then I didn't figure out what I needed fast enough. But I also think I was supposed to fail. 
Like, I think that was part of that journey that God was like, eh, you know, Stacy, you're not going to love this. It's going to be messy, <laughs> but I need you to learn some things on the back end when I could bring, I bring you out of this and something, and it looks different. I think that was really kind of the whole point of it. So yes, there were definitely moments. And when I hit my third year and I was closing in on my fourth year, I remember thinking I need to scale because eventually I'm going to run out of hours. Even as a consultant, I'm yeah. like, I'm going to run out of hours. Like if I can get enough clients, eventually, maybe one day I'll run out of hours. I need to scale and you can't scale when you're drowning. Like you, you just, it's impossible to even consider or think about. So there were a lot of kind of warning signs for me. Most of them though, unfortunately did come as I reflected back. Mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha. And I think that that's very important because there's so many business owners that I've talked to. I mean, with, you know, my background being accounting and finance. And one of the things that I kind of look at is, you know, like what is your cost of acquisition? Like how much mm -hmm. effort um, and how much money are you putting into getting new clients? And what I start to find is like said, people who don't have a, 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 a good flow of referrals, their, their CAC or their cost of a, you know, acquisition tend to be very high emotionally and financially because it just, it becomes draining over time. Yes. And I love that you like look at it from that perspective, right? Because you're right. Most people look at things from well, what what's the, the financial cost? And I'm like, yeah, but there's this whole other component to the emotional cost that goes along to it as well. I mean, yes, when my business failed financially, obviously it wasn't doing well, <laughs> right? I mean, like that's kind of a no brainer. But at the end of the day, the hardest thing for me to overcome was more about the emotional piece of all of it. Like, not having clients and like what that looked like and how long it took and how much time it took. I mean, there are so many moments where I can remember sitting in my driveway and turning my car on and hearing the engine turn over and backing out of the driveway and being like, here we go again, another rubber <laughs> chicken dinner, leaving my kids at home, you know, whether it's with the sitter or with my husband or whatever it was at the time, it's like, wow, here we go again. Let's hope wow. there's a client at this event because I kind of need one. And it is emotionally draining as well as it is financially in all parts of the business from that perspective. So I love that you look at that because it is, it's two parts and they're very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's one of those things that I, I ask some business owners, like when they're going through that, like I said, that feast of famine, it's just like, okay, all right, if you're dedicated on being a business owner, like, can you do this for the rest of your life? Or as long as you want to run this business, let's say, you know, seven years, it's like, is this pace sustainable? So when I, and I saw, like I said, the, the, the tagline that you had on LinkedIn about, you know, generating referrals without asking, it resonated so well because there are so many people similar to what you described, like they don't like doing the older method. So as you started to, to really help clients, you know, you know, what does it feel like to see them have like those light bulb moments where they start to realize like, hey, there is a different way. Yes, it's amazing, right? There is still a healthy dose of skepticism when someone is first hearing me talk about referrals without asking and what does that mean? And I mean, and I can have people who will maybe they will kind of go through some of my free training or they'll read some articles or listen to some podcast episodes and they won't completely dive into it, but they'll get that like surface understanding. And I will still get emails and they'll be like, I love all your stuff. But <laughs> at what point are you going to teach me to? ask for referrals. Like they're almost expecting it, right? Like everybody else teaches, even when they say it's not going to be asking. And then there's like a sly way they teach you to ask. And they're like, wait, it all comes back to the asking. I'm like, no, you're not allowed to ask when you follow my program. Like fundamentally, it'll break the concept of what we're building and the relationships we're trying to build and to serve and to nurture within this process. And so you're not allowed to ask. But so first, there's like that healthy dose of skepticism. People are like, mm, does she really? Is this her gimmick to get me to pay attention? And then later, she's just gonna be like, ah, just kidding. You got to ask for him. Like, I do think there's some of that. And then what I find is, is that people don't understand the basic functionalities of what a referral is and why it happens. Because once you understand what it is and why it happens for you, then you can like unpack it and look at, okay, that tells you where to spend your time and energy and money, right? Even though you shouldn't really be spending a lot of money, but that shows you where to spend your time and energy to be able to duplicate or generate more referrals. And so I think for me, as I see clients have that light bulb moment, it's like, first they're like, oh, wait, I believe you. And then it's like, oh, wait, this is so much better than anything else I have been told to do. Like I have an attorney in the program in my growth by referrals program. And she told me early on, she's been in the program since like 2017, 
or 16, something like that. And she said, you know, I was actually in sales training where they were basically demanding that I cold call and get meetings and ask for referrals. And she was like, I left every training session with that coach and that sales trainer almost in tears. She's like, wow. cause I'm a lawyer. I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, because most of us decide to start a business. It's because we're really good at something, not because we're amazing at sales. And so we have to learn that piece. And then we look for ways to learn that piece that fit us naturally. And there's not a lot of ways out there that do that. And so that is a big part for me. It's like kind of watching. It's yes, I want to see the, we call it the referral explosion. And I want to see the numbers. And I love it when my clients have it. Like we just did a big roundup for some folks in the in the program. Like, where are you at the six month mark at the beginning of July? And like, uh, like the people who participated and I just picked a handful to share their results. And they're more than 50% towards their goal for the number of referrals for the year. One's goal was like 15. She's already at 20 referrals for the year. Most people that have higher numbers are at the 50% mark or over. And I love those moments too. But the real one that I love the most is when they're like, wait, I believe you. I can do this without asking. And because I give you everything, like the what to do, who to do it for, what to say, and how to approach it and how to treat people, which is usually just being a good human. But sometimes we need reminders. That's the light bulb I really love to see when they're like, I believe you and I can do this. And then off to the races they go. Nice, nice. I love it. I love it. Now, I mean, when someone's working with you, kind of, what does that time frame kind of look like when they like, how long does it take them usually? Or how long has it taken some of your clients to kind of hit that point where they are like, hey, light bulbs have gone off. Now, I believe you like I see it now. Let me go work this thing. Yeah, I find that the light bulb typically goes off that, hey, this can work for me before they decide to pay any money, right? Like <laughs> most of the time before people are going to join the, pro the Growth by Referrals program, they've gotten to the place where they're like, I believe this will work, right? I mean, there's all, I always tell folks, there's a refund period. Like it's not the end of the world if you made a mistake, right? Like you shouldn't make a mistake when you do this. But um, so usually the light bulb moment happens before they decide to join and spend any money on it. And it starts happening if they've like read my book or listened to my podcast or write, do any of my tree trainings or in my free Facebook group. So the light bulb will start to go off. But it's once they get into the training and they actually start seeing how I teach it and what we do and how we do it and what we say and all those pieces and the roadmap that they build, right? Depending on someone's willingness to like buckle down and get through it and get it done, they can have everything they need built and going in like half a day, like up a couple of hours. So I tell folks, I'm like, it doesn't take that that long to get it going, but it is your consistency of execution on the back end. The great thing about what I build for folks is that this isn't something you do daily, weekly, or even monthly, but it is something you will do six to eight times a year. And so you have to be committed to that level of work and that level of involvement. And this is something you can just out. Yes, you can use outsourcing and delegation and all that good stuff. But some of the stuff you're going to have to do yourself as the business owner, because these are relationships with other humans that matter and that deserve to be respected and treat a certain way. We're just going to also use specific language to help them think about us from a referral perspective while we're taking care of them and being so thankful that they refer to us. And so, you know, I will have clients who come in and they will triple or quadruple the number of referrals in one year following my plan than they ever have before. Some will just double and just double is all they need. Others, it'll grow over time, right? They'll go from like the financial advisor, um, David, I'm thinking about who went from three or four referrals to 15 and then his second year, 17. And now he's in his third year going for the next wow. number after that. So Sometimes we have a fast start and sometimes it takes a little bit longer. I had a CPA who went to the program. It was like, I think they said, hey, I got 15 referrals in 45 days. Like, so the results <laughs> wow. can vary, but it also has a lot to do with your business and your, your already relationships that you have with your existing mm -hmm. referral sources. And we build from there. For someone who has no referral sources, it will take longer. For someone who yeah. has had people in the past refer them, we can move faster, um, but we always set a goal. So we always know, hey, when you come into this program and you're going to do this work, if you do this work, this is your average of referrals a year. And now we've decided that with this program, what a reasonable goal is, is that you need to reach here. And then we track it every quarter to see if they're getting to that number. Most get there well before the first year is up, but not all, right? I mean, everybody kind of moves at their own pace. And this all comes down to the relationships you have with people. So if you're a take, 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 taker, you have to overcome that and stop that because that's just bad business, right? Yeah. To build relationships better. If you already care about people, well, this will be a lot easier for you. <laughs> no, I absolutely love it because I mean, that's uh, definitely one of those 
mindsets that we, we we've established with you know with the business talk library i mean why it even got started where we started doing all these shows was just giving sharing some of that free value that people needed because it's just like hey we we know we can't help everyone so we we're like hey the people that can grow from what we offer we we love doing it and you know and there's another thing that stood out for for me as well is when i saw that you also had a podcast so can you tell us a little bit about that and where people can find it yeah so the podcast is called roadmap to grow your business we are somewhere in the 160 range of episodes that we have now out. I batch produce, you probably do too on some level. <laughs> um, and so I, we're, I'm were i closing it on 170, but that's not how many are actually out right now. I think we're in the 160 range. Um, and so we've been doing this for three years, which is kind of crazy to think. And you know what's funny, my podcast started because I was writing my first book, which is called Generating Business Referrals Without Asking. Mm -hmm. So I was writing that book and I was also writing a blog post every week. And when I was doing the blog post every week and then trying to write a book, I was like, too much writing. Like I just, <laughs> I can't write anymore. I'm putting it all, I'm putting it in the book, like plus the blog post. So I said, let me try podcasting. Maybe that'll be easier, which is funny because I still script out some of the things I'm gonna say, like the bullet point <laughs> stuff or whatever, but it is not a grammatically correct outline is what I tell myself. It's like, it's just bullet points. I don't have to like make sure it's right before it goes up as a blog post or an article. And that's why I started it. And I love it. And I think it's a great way. You probably find this too. It's a great way to connect with the listeners, particularly the ones who come back every week and they they know what to expect, you know, over time um, from me. And I hope what they feel from the podcast is if they decide to join me in any of my paid programs, that's the same Stacy who shows up like straight shooter. Some kinds can go off in a soapbox, but we'll give you <laughs> what you need to know to make um, to make things happen and have results. Oh, I absolutely love it. Now, for all the people that are excited about, you know, what you've talked about and they're interested in learning more, where can they find you online or on social media? Yeah. So I don't ever want to overwhelm anyone thing like, yeah, there's so many places to go. But we, <laughs> we try to be in as many places that we can where people like to be so they can easily find us. So on most social media platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, you're going to find us at Sta um, Stacy Brown Randall. That's what you're going to that's be the easiest thing to search for. Um, of course, our website, though, is really our home base. It's the best place to get started. And that is StacyBrownRandall.com. Stacy has an E. And of course, it's going to have information on there about the podcast. It'll have information on there about the book and articles that we have. And I would also tell you there's a great quiz that you can take that really helps people understand what it looks like um, in terms of how well do you generate referrals now without asking? And are you at that referral ninja beginner level? And if you're not yet at the referral ninja beginner level, once you take the quiz, we'll make sure that you get what you need to figure out how to close those gaps. So I always tell folks, if you're really interested in referrals without asking and what it means and what it looks like for your business, take that nine question free quiz because it only takes me those nine questions to figure out exactly where you are, your starting point, and then showing you what the finish line could look like. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, one question I always ask every guest that comes on is when you think about, you know, your journey and you think about where you've been and where you are now and just even your, your excitement for where you're going, what's two lessons that you would share with other business owners? Okay. So the first one I would say is that being a business owner is all about being uncomfortable. And it is about testing yourself. Like there's probably things you do in business that you do really well. And you're like, I could do this all day long. And then like, for me, you give me a piece of tech software I have to figure out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hate this stuff, right? It's like, it's a, being a business owner is about being uncomfortable, but it is amazing when I look back at all the things. I mean, I built an entire WordPress site by myself, not the one you just showed. <laughs> that was professionally done, but I have done it. Like there's so many things that I, I have figured out how to edit a podcast episode. I don't do it, but I could like, you just got to get uncomfortable and be okay with that. That's my first piece of advice. And my second piece of advice specific to the referrals piece is that the number one way to know if you want more referrals is to first identify who's already referring you. Because when you go through a process to identify where your business comes from and then identifying who's referred to you and who's doing that referring, who is your referral source, you're going to see names of humans that you know and maybe are neglecting or haven't spent enough time with. And it is going to be powerful for you and empowering because you'll recognize when you have a list of people who've referred you clients without you having to do a whole bunch of work or spending a bunch of money to get those clients in the door, you'll realize that list of referral sources is your business's biggest 
asset. And hopefully that'll drive you to want to do more. But if that's all it does, at least it'll make you very aware of who is supporting your business and who you probably should be paying attention to. Awesome. I absolutely love it. Well, Stacey, thank you so much for coming on. And before we wrap up, can you repeat your website one more time for the viewers and listeners? Yes, StaceyBrownRandall.com and Stacy has an E. Awesome. Well, Stacy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Finance and Accounting Show. If you like what you heard, don't be selfish. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and then share this with a friend because you know a business owner that could definitely use this insight. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and turn on the notification bell so you get all the updates when we release a new episode.